Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. And today's video is going to be a quick update that should have technically been this morning, but is actually going to be this afternoon. Um, there were some issues with recording the video the first time. Um, something got corrupted on that one particular video, and um, yeah, it wouldn't import into the editing software. So we're doing it again. Um, thankfully, right after that, I recorded the Ask Me Anything answers video which you know sat down here for quite a while talking and luckily all those are in good shape and went into the editing software no problem so that will be edited and be up for saturday's video so a little bit off schedule out of sync it happens so first up the outlaw ultima um a couple updates on this one i figured out what was wrong it was my fault well it wasn't, it wasn't. It was. <laughs> so I took the whole transmission out, took it apart. All the gears in there are absolutely perfect. So that really confused me because it definitely sounded like that there were some issues. Um, so I added two very thin shims to the side of the bevel gears and the diff just to push those gears together a little bit tighter. And it still sounds fine. It's not overly tight. Um, but got everything back in it and took it outside and it was still going, eh. and I'm like, what in the world? So I sat on the desk and sat there and looked at it, looked at it, looked at it. I don't know, let's take the motor out. And when I took the pinion off, I realized what happened. So when I initially put the pinion on here, I was tightening it down and I felt the Allen wrench kind of pop when it got tight. And I'm like, okay, that's going to strip out. So that's probably tight enough. Well, it wasn't. So evidently what happened is that stripped out and it didn't quite get tight enough. So once it landed, it kind of, kind of came up and kind of went on one tire. And when that other tire landed, it shocked it. And it was enough to get it to start spinning around the motor shaft or the motor shaft spinning inside the pinion. Um, but under light load, it would lock in place tight enough to drive. But then when you gave it full beans, it would start spinning the shaft inside the pinion. I should have gone ahead and replaced it when I put it in. You know, I've got a drawer full of you know, probably 20 or 30 of those grub screws sitting over here. Um, should have just replaced it, but figured, eh, it's good enough. And it wasn't. <laughs> So that's fixed and ready to go. Now, as far as the wheels go, um, we have the stock ones on the front and the not so stock ones on the rear. Um, Phil over at uh, Poor Boys RC sent me a set of four new wheels uh, for this. I just paid for the, sh he just wanted me to pay for the shipping. He was sending me the wheels for free. So thank you very much, Phil. Now the issue with those wheels were they were green and I mean green. Um, somebody painted them like dark Hulk green, uh, front and back. But after sitting in a bath of uh, super clean for a few days and some scrubbing and picking, the wheels are actually white again. Um, now they did pick up a slight tinge of purple from the super clean. And you know, if you look at it, you can kind of see some residual stuff in there that I think I can scrape out still. Um, but overall, a drastic improvement from the green 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 that they were and they actually turned out much brighter white than the um, factory ones are or the original ones on the truck are so it definitely brightened them up in the wash as well or the paint kept them from yellowing like the white plastics so I still have the three others to finish cleaning up um, but you know, just some patience, some super clean. Uh, my only big concern was is leaving them in the super clean for so long because they've sat in there for about four or five days now um, to get all the paint softened up. I was a little worried that sitting in there for so long that the paint was going to mix with the super clean and start impregnating the wheel with kind of a green tinge anyway. But thankfully, maybe a hint of purple from it, but again, much better than the kind of ivory ones and you know it'll have matchy matchies all the way around so get the wheels on that and we'll call that one done now the rc10t uh we have the body cut out now um the only issue with the body uh it, it cut out very nice be careful with it because it is kind of thin in some of these lower areas down here um the body over in itself is fairly thin um, it's definitely modeled after the original body. It's not, um, like the 030, like the newer bodies are, 
but um, it's a little thin, so just be careful if you're using a razor knife to cut through it. Um, down in one of these corners, down here, I was scoring it and the knife just kind of sunk in, so just be careful. Um, and the other issue is, with the way it sits right now, um, I cut it all out to the factory lines, drilled it out in the factory holes, and the body sits flush back in the back here with the bottom of the tub. Well, it sits down a little bit. You know, rake forward is usually kind of cool, but the issue is, uh, it's not going to pick it up on the camera, but the body is cut out up here for the suspension arms. And again, it's cut out to the factory lines, but with the body as it sits, it's banging on those arms. So I can either cut out a little bit more off of each side, which I'd rather not do. I'd rather that cut out be hidden by the bumper um, or raise up these body posts by about three millimeter. And once it's up there, then it's not, it's barely clicking. So probably have to do a little bit of fiddling with that, but you know, it is what it is. Um, got the electronics installed. Uh, got a 1060 in there, generic. Uh, spectrum receiver and for the motor um bob from uncle bob's rc has sent me a um reedy mach 2 um stock motor i guess it's like a 27 turn motor but it has like i think 45 degrees of timing in it so definitely an advanced you know 27 degree motor or 27 turn motor um but the com looks brand new the brushes are brand new um so evidently he rebuilt this and you know sent it over to me a while ago so uh what i did is i put a 23 tooth pinion on here um again guessing uh, a lot of people basically have said 18 to you know 20 something uh depending um on the bench it still feels a little slow but you know it just may be just the the kit. We'll see what it does when we go out and run it. If it's too high, we'll bump it back down to something more like an 18 tooth. But at this point, it is what it is. So um, I did flatten out the rear tires. So adjusted the camber links and adjusted the front um, steering links. Now it's a pain in the ass to adjust these things because the ball cups don't stay on there. You know, you have the little pivot to where you can get a wrench on there and, and turn the, the thing. The problem is the shaft inside of those cups is so tight as soon as you go to adjust it you just rip the whole um arm off so it, honestly just pop the arms off gently adjust it and put the arms back on it there's really no adjusting these on the car um because like i said those cups that threads in so tight into there you it, once you start adjusting it's just going to pop the the whole link right off. Um, the links I adjusted to 52.75 millimeters for the rear camber links and the front steering arms or front steering links. We still have some toe out in the front, which a little bit shouldn't be too bad. And like I said, the 52.75 flattened out the rear tires and they stay pretty much flat throughout the whole stroke. Um, you know, it's going to lean a little bit here and there um, going around the corners, but you know, it, at least on flat ground, it's setting, you know, pretty much dead flat. Um, the <clears throat> measurement on the servo horn for mine was 18.5 millimeters between the center hole and where the ball stud is. And that clears my full size servo in here just fine. Um, now with the servo horn being kind of long, the I had to turn the rate down on my my radio to about 60% because it was, you know, immediately locking the, the front end. So you're going to have to kind of fiddle with that one per whatever servo you put in here and, you know, the length of your throw, your servo and everything. But at least that 18.5 is a roundabout measurement that'll clear the front of the servo, no problem, and should get you in a ballpark. Um, that's better than what they put in the manual. Um, so that is where that's at. Still have not figured out the body. Um, I have a fairly good idea. Um, pretty sure we're not going to go box art with this one. I think this is going to end up going with something, you know, not plain, but custom and, you know, not, you know, race truck livery. Um, I did roll bars and silver, bed and black. The rest of the body is going to be kind of like a two-tone. Um, not going super crazy with it. I just, I like the box art, but for this one, I just want to do something different. Oh, sorry. The servo was 19.5. I got it written down over here. 19.5 um, length. Um, the Hornets 
R34. That's getting new stripes cut. Um, I actually had a viewer mention, hey, why don't you just use a vinyl cutter and cut new stripes for it? And I'm like, Wow, yeah, I'm dumb. I, I've got one of those and <laughs> didn't even think about it. So I just need to go to the craft store and pick up three sheets of the appropriate colors to match the stripes. So I think all I'm gonna do is stick one of the spare Hornet stickers to the back of my phone and take it in there and be like, I need this color and this color and this color and um, see what we can get. So as soon as I get the stripes redone on that and they'll stay on there, I'll get that out for a run video. Um, speaking of run videos, I still need to get the little Red Cat Ascent 18 out. Um, it's just been god awful hot and humid here lately, and the bugs and the heat and every I just don't want to. <laughs> so I know we're supposed to get some rain at the end of the week um, to cool things off. Well, hopefully the cool temperatures will hang out for a little bit. Um, but I don't know. It's just been miserable out there. You go out there at 7:30 in the morning and it's already miserable. You go out there at 9:30 at night and it's still miserable. So um, I just haven't um, had to gumption to go out there and sweat and fight off the bugs to run that little truck around um but anyway like i said the ask me anything video will be coming up here on saturday um it's going to be a long one i was down here talking for quite a while and it's kind of the reason that i didn't get this re-recorded last night because my voice was shot by the end of that so um talking for probably almost two hours um it was just no good at that point uh, anyway, until that one, everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you guys on the next one. See you.